Okay, so uh, we're tackling a, a pretty wild one for this deep dive. The Maker, right? You guys sent over some seriously interesting stuff on him. Excerpts from his Wikipedia page. And this, like, summary that goes deep into the psychology of it all. Clearly, you're not just after the surface-level superhero stuff here. Not at all. This is one of those deep dives that really makes you question the whole hero-villain dichotomy. I mean, we're talking about Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, the yeah. poster boy for scientific brilliance, for using your powers for good. And then he takes this turn into, well, something truly monstrous. It's dark, man. Genocide not once, but twice. What could make anyone, let alone a genius like Reed Richards, go that far off the deep end? The uh, pasted text you sent along points to Dr. Doom, actually. Like, a betrayal by Doom was this major turning point for Reed. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, and I think it's not just about the betrayal itself, but what it does to Reed's whole worldview, right? This is a guy who staked his entire life on science and reason, on the idea that you can solve anything build a better future if you just apply enough brain power. Right, right. That's always been his thing. And then Doom, someone he probably thought he understood, someone he trusted, throws this massive wrench in the whole system. Yeah, I could see how that would mess you up. To have that kind of faith in someone, and the idea of heroes even, just completely shattered. Absolutely. And then on top of that, you've got the personal tragedies. I mean, the Wikipedia entry mentions Sue rejecting his proposal and like the perceived loss of his entire family. Oof. Yeah, that's brutal. It's like his whole world implodes and his solution is to, I don't know, rebuild it from scratch. So it's not just about loss, but like this fundamental need to control things, to impose his own order on a world that seems to have gone completely haywire. Exactly. And this is where things get really interesting, because it's not like he's just reacting to things anymore. The Wikipedia entry talks about this place called the end zone, this cosmic realm or whatever. It's supposed to be where he's exposed to this vast, almost incomprehensible knowledge, but also like incredible danger. OK, hold up. End zone. Yeah, it's kind of a wild concept. So he's out there stretching his mind to its absolute limit, maybe even beyond what a human mind is supposed to handle. And that's part of what pushes him over the edge. It's definitely a factor. Like, imagine being exposed to that much knowledge, that much power. Right. It would change you. And not necessarily for the better. I mean, it's like opening Pandora's box, but on a cosmic scale. And we're talking about a guy who can already stretch his body into, like, any shape imaginable. Right. But it goes even further than that. The Wikipedia entry talks about how his powers actually evolve. It's not just stretching. It's, like, adaptation on a cellular level. Okay, so... Less stretchy dude, more like, what, shapeshifter? Kind of, but more fundamental. He can basically rewrite his own biology on the fly. Seriously? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Like, enhance his durability and manipulate his internal organs. Hold on, manipulate his organs? What does that even mean? He could, like, bypass his own vital functions if he needed to. The Wikipedia entry even says he doesn't even need to eat or breathe in the traditional sense anymore. No way. So he's, like, beyond human at that point. In a lot of ways, yeah. And I think that feeds into the whole tragedy of the maker, you know? The further he pushes his powers, the more he transcends those basic human limitations, the more disconnected he becomes from everyone else. Right, like those shared experiences, the things that make us human, they just don't apply to him anymore. Exactly. Which makes his whole detachment as the maker, that coldness, Yeah. it's almost understandable. In a way, it's still messed up, of course, but you can see how he gets there. Yeah, for sure. So, okay, what about the whole children of tomorrow thing? Oh, right. They're Mark. genetically engineered, right? Yeah. Like, is he trying to create his own master race or something? I think it's more nuanced than that. I mean, the pasted text is vague on the specifics, but it does mention that he rules over them for a thousand years. A thousand years. That's yeah. like a whole civilization. Exactly. So it's not just about creating a bunch of superpowered individuals. It's about shaping an entire society. But on his terms, right, like... He's giving them these gifts, these enhanced abilities, but it comes at a price. That's the implication, yeah. The pasted text doesn't get into their daily lives, or if they even have a concept of freedom like we do. It's like that whole needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few thing, but taken to a whole other level. And I think it speaks to a fundamental aspect of Reed's transformation into the maker, you know? How so? It's not enough for him to be right, for his intellect to be acknowledged. He needs to impose that intellect, that vision, onto everything around him. Even if it means becoming the villain. Even then. Wow. And remember that whole thing with the end zone? The cosmic Pandora's box. Yeah. The Wikipedia entry, it mentions how that experience really warps his perception. Like, he sees the potential for greatness, 
but also the fragility of reality itself. So he's not just trying to fix a world, he's trying to fix reality itself. In a way, yeah. And the more he tries to control things, the more unhinged he becomes. And that's ultimately what leads him to the superflow, right? The space between universes. Exactly. Like, he's not content with just playing God in his own backyard. He wants to control the whole damn multiverse. Which is where things get really interesting, but we'll delve into that more in a bit. Okay, so we're talking about controlling the superflow, which is basically okay. like the source code of reality, right? It's a pretty good analogy. I mean, we're talking about the fabric of existence here. And the maker wants to control it. I mean, I get the ambition, kind of, but how do you even begin to wrap your head around something that big? It's a level of power that's almost unimaginable. Right. The Wikipedia entry mentions him having access to other dimensions, but is that enough? Access is one thing. Mastery is a whole other ball game. Okay, so how do you go from being able to peek into other dimensions to, like, rewriting the rules of reality. That's where his time in the end zone becomes key. Ah, right, the cosmic knowledge dump. Exactly. We're not just talking about advanced science here. It's like he's glimpsed the fundamental forces that hold the entire multiverse together. And knowing the maker, he doesn't just want to understand it. He wants to control it. Precisely. So what does that even look like? I mean, if he succeeds, what happens to free will, to choice? It's a chilling thought, isn't it? A reality where... One mind, even a mind as brilliant as Reed Richards, dictates the course of countless universes. Like the ultimate expression of ego, right? And the scariest part is he probably justifies it to himself. Yeah. Like he's doing it for the greater good to create a perfect multiverse. Even if it means sacrificing everything that makes us unique, makes us human. That's the tragedy of the maker. He loses sight of his own humanity in his pursuit of perfection. And it's not like he's entirely alone, right? The Wikipedia entry mentions him encountering other versions of himself, other Reed Richards from across the multiverse. Yeah, that adds a whole other layer of complexity. Imagine coming face to face with different versions of yourself, some heroes, some villains, some somewhere in between. So it's not just about the maker versus the multiverse. It's about him confronting all the different paths he could have taken. Exactly. And some of those paths, they lead to him becoming the very thing he's trying to destroy. It really makes you question the whole idea of free will, doesn't it? Like, if there are infinite versions of ourselves out there, each making different choices, what does that say about our own lives, our own decisions? It's a lot to process. So after this deep dive into the mind of the maker, after all the stretching and the betrayals and the cosmic horror, what's the takeaway? I think it's a reminder that even the brightest minds can be corrupted. Absolutely. That even with the best of intentions, the pursuit of knowledge and power can lead to dark places. And maybe, just maybe, it's a reminder to be careful what you wish for. Because the universe might just be listening. Thanks for taking this deep dive with me. It's been uh, enlightening, to say the least. My pleasure. And to you, dear listener, keep exploring, keep asking questions. But remember, sometimes the most terrifying monsters are the ones we create ourselves.